Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I thought it'd be fun to do a little comparison between a couple of the internships I did while I was a graduate student. As is still the case, I think a lot of the people in the engineering software tech space want to go to one of these big tech companies like Google, Apple, Facebook, whether it's for the perks, the pay, prestige, the chance to work on some really cool tech that basically the whole world depends on. Everyone's got their own reasons for wanting to work where they do. And I admit, when I was in school, those companies like Google, Apple, Facebook were where all the cool kids went to intern. So I wanted to get internships at those places too. And I did end up getting an internship at Google in LA when I was going into my sixth year as a PhD student. And overall that summer, I had a really positive experience. But when I look back on all of the internship experiences I had, it's not like one internship in particular took the cake as the best internship across the board. Like there are pros and cons to all of them. And it also might be interesting to some people to know the pay at a company like Google compared to the pay at other companies that maybe don't have the same prestige that Google has. Qualcomm, for instance, is not in the Bay Area may not be that well known to a lot of people who are not in tech and doesn't have the appeal for whatever reason to these young kids who are coming out of college and looking for the hottest new jobs in tech. But don't be so quick to think that Qualcomm is worse than Google, at least in terms of internships. There are so many things that factor into an internship experience and I think that college and graduate students should be more open-minded about the opportunities that they pursue and the experiences that they hope to get. So what I've done is I've made a spreadsheet here where I've listed out similarities and differences between my Google internship and my Qualcomm internship in a bunch of different categories, pay, relocation, housing, perks, etc. And I just like to go through these categories and just talk about them. There are also a couple other companies I'll be shouting out while I go through this spreadsheet because interestingly, in some of these categories, there are some interesting contenders, at least out of the other offers I've gotten and the other internships I've done. So let's just get the biggest one out of the way first. Pay. As a sixth year PhD student, Google's offer stated the pay would be a little over $2,000 a week. I'll put the exact amounts on the screen somewhere, but my internship was 13 weeks, so that turns into a summer salary of a little over $26,000. Qualcomm, on the other hand, stated that their pay would be $43 an hour. We worked 40 hour weeks, and my internship was also 13 weeks. So the amount that I got from Qualcomm over the summer was almost 22,000. And that's about a $4,500 difference between Google's amount. Now, what about relocation? Google gave a $9,000 lump sum to cover moving and housing. So I got that $9,000 and I could spend it however I wanted to, to get myself out to LA and to find a place to stay for the summer. Qualcomm reimbursed the cost of actually relocating. So they reimbursed my gas mileage and any hotels that I had to stay at while I was driving from Austin to San Diego. Austin is where I was going to school. San Diego is where the Qualcomm headquarters are and where my internship was. And then they put all of the interns in housing. So I didn't have to worry about finding a place to stay or finding a place that was within a certain budget for the summer, which was really helpful. If I'm comparing these two companies based on the offers alone, I did make a little bit more at Google but I actually had a pretty terrible Airbnb experience that summer and I did end up needing the entire relocation amount that Google offered. So really the difference is not that large. Interestingly, when I was going through my documents, I had an internship offer from Samsung in the Bay Area that actually paid a little bit more than Google did. And their relocation plus housing total was about $7,500. It is in the Bay Area, and I don't know if salaries at Samsung are adjusted for location, but my point is, is it's not like Google is running away with the gold here in terms of offer amount. Now let's talk location. 
Los Angeles versus San Diego. Both are in Southern California. The weather is beautiful. You're near the water. Both are really great places to be during the summer. And I love Los Angeles, but I do prefer San Diego. It's just less crowded, a little bit more relaxed. So Google is actually in Venice, which is right by the water. I think their offices were only like two blocks inland. And the apartment that I got that summer was also in Venice. And I liked that neighborhood, but there's just so much to see in LA. Every weekend we'd try to explore a different neighborhood and I don't even think we covered half of the city. And everyone in LA seems to be going somewhere or doing something. It's kind of frantic. I don't know, it's not really my speed. San Diego is much more my pace. I mean, location is very personal, very subjective, but for me, San Diego beats LA. Okay, so now I wanna talk a little bit about the internship programs at these two companies. So for Google, I don't know if it was because I was in LA and not at their headquarters in the Bay Area, but we didn't have intern events anywhere near the level that Qualcomm had. The Google LA office is pretty small and they did have a good number of interns, but I can only remember a few activities and events that I did with other interns that summer. And I don't even think that some of them were official intern events, like organized by Google. They were just things that like some of us interns wanted to do, so we organized our own little thing. Also at Google, around where I was sitting, all of the other interns, I think, were graduate students. And we all stayed pretty late at work, I think because we all had cool, challenging projects and we all wanted to make good impressions. So there was a little bit of pressure to, you know, deliver and be able to show good results. So in a way, maybe that summer, I just didn't have as much time to participate in intern events. At Qualcomm, I felt way more connected with the other interns. I'm still very good friends with some of them. I felt like the internship program at Qualcomm was very well organized and that they really did treat their interns very well. My project was also a little more straightforward, so I rarely, if ever, had to stay late at work. I think the internship experience at Qualcomm was just a little more well-rounded. In terms of the teams I was on and the people that I was working with, I think my supervisors at both Google and Qualcomm were both very good, and both teams were great. Actually, my favorite team that I've ever interned with was at Texas Instruments. So again, there are a lot of things that go into an internship experience and the prestige that a company has has little to do with it. Another thing I thought I could compare is how much I learned. So I did learn more at Google and I think it was because the project I was doing was just a little bit more challenging and it pushed me a little bit further out of my comfort zone. At Google, I learned a lot about good coding practices and my project was related to machine learning, which is what I wanted to do. At Qualcomm, my project was more in the classical computer vision space, which is also interesting to me, but it just didn't challenge me in the same way. And the last thing I thought might be interesting to compare is perks. So yes, everyone knows Google has free food, free snacks, Qualcomm has nothing like that. The summer I interned at Google, I barely spent any money on groceries. I either ate at work or I was out exploring LA's food scene. In terms of food, I guess Google takes the point there. Another thing that was important to me was having a gym. So thankfully the Google LA office had a small gym with the essentials. And they also offered some workout and yoga classes, which was really nice. Qualcomm had a nicer, bigger gym. So I'd call it a tie, I think, in terms of workout facilities. Though I did see Arnold Schwarzenegger like 15 times when I was working out at the Google LA gym because the squat racks at that gym were overlooking the street that led to Gold's gym, which is where he works out. So I'd see him biking to the gym pretty frequently, which was exciting. I will also say that Google had way more interesting speakers. 
You can see them if you follow the Talks at Google YouTube channel, but they bring in chefs to do demos, authors, actors, athletes, just very diverse, interesting people. At Qualcomm, I did get to see Bill Nye, but they had a lottery for picking who even got to attend that talk. I guess Qualcomm didn't really do a speaker series, but I found some of those talks at Google to be quite memorable. I think my main takeaway here is don't judge an internship by the company name. There are so many different things that factor into an internship experience that just because one company has the name and the prestige and everybody and their mother wants to get a job there, it doesn't necessarily mean that that company is going to give you the best internship experience. I mean, it's great if you can get a job at one of these big tech companies and you actually want to work there, but if you haven't interned at a place like Google or Facebook or Apple, and you're struggling to get an interview and get your foot in the door, don't worry. Maybe broaden your search and look at some companies that you haven't considered before. I think you could really have an amazing internship experience anywhere. And with that, I think I'm going to conclude this video. Thank you so much for making it to this point in the video if you have. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Oh boy.